Hey there, baseball fans, and welcome to another edition of Wax Packs, opening some old school baseball card packs from my youth. Today we are traveling back in time, 31 years to 1990, to open up a handful of packs of 1990 Bowman baseball gum, baseball card gum, Bowman baseball cards, bubble gum cards, it says it right here. Uh, interesting thing about Bowman is that they were originally one of the um, baseball card companies, and then they were gone for many, many, many years. 1989, they were brought back with those oversized cards that were very cool, but always a pain in the neck as a collector. Um, and then this is the second year back. They were owned as the top subsidiary, I believe, at this point. Um, in any case, they do have gum in them. And uh, we're going to open them up and see what we got. As always, I'm looking for some of my old-time Cubs favorites, Sean Dunstan, Ryan Sandberg, Mark Grace, or Nolan Ryan, um, one of my favorite players of all time. So... Let's see what we get in here. I actually like, let's see how bad the gum is. All right, not too, uh, some staining there, but not too bad there. I'm not eating the gum. Um, I always thought Bowman was interesting because they went a completely different route with the sta stats on here by showing kind of how they were against each team or something or some other thing. They didn't give you the full year stats in the same way. Um, cool as a supplement to kind of what was already existing uh, if you had other cards, but kind of lacking if, you, if these are the only cards you had. So. I love that they fa the fact that their sweepstakes entries on these were really nice artwork. And this is Jerome Walton here. So if you get somebody cool, then that's a really good thing to have. A good way to, to really use the space for people who aren't going to enter the sweepstakes. All right, let's see if we can get anything interesting or good here. Kurt Schilling, um, much maligned kind of in recent years. Andres Galarraga, the big cat. Mark Grace, hey, look at that! First pack! And I get one of my faves. Mark Grace will put that aside up here for now. Move these down a little bit. So that's fantastic. That makes my day. Let's just take a look at that real quick. This is Mark Grace in his second or third year, I think, with the Cubs. Solid hitter. Always reliable. Good fielder. I'll add that to my personal collection. Oh, and uh, also, oh, there's Ozzie Smith. Fantastic uh, statesman for the sport and a Hall of Famer. Um... And I'm also going to be looking for somebody for our series of, hey, whatever happened to that guy, um, to see what happened to these ball players after the fact. Maybe we'll go with somebody who maybe had a shorter career, because I always find those so interesting. We always think about the superstars who played for years and years and years in the majors, um, but most of the guys just um, really never made it that far. That is an odd-looking picture of Bo Jackson, I think. Let me just confirm that. Yes, it is Bo Jackson. I don't think that's the greatest representation, but you know it's interesting. We'll keep we'll keep it aside. Bo Jackson's one of those most intriguing players. Kevin Mass, eh, he's a. You know, I'm gonna put that aside for now and see if he's our whatever happened to that guy for today. Oh, Greg Maddox, there you go, fantastic pitcher. I love him on the Cubs, and of course he went on to Braves fame as well. John Smoltz, another one of those great Braves pitchers. And Dave Parker, good slugger back in his day. So far, I'll tell you, it's pretty good, pretty good uh, session here with uh, some Hall of Famers and Mark Grace already. And that Bo Jackson, weird-looking Bo Jackson picture. That's Greg Olson, I believe. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Fantastic. Fine there, Ken Griffey Jr. Put that aside. Benny Santiago, good catcher. Jim Key and Brett Sabrehagen. Brett Sabrehagen had a couple good, really good seasons, obviously, and Greg Vaughn. Uh, let's see. Travis Fryman, another good player for a while. Tim Belcher, also a great pitcher for a while. You know, and that's the thing is, like, with baseball, you can have a couple seasons, a couple breakout seasons where you're the thing, and then um, hard to sustain it. So that's why it makes those Hall of Famers who had, you know, 10, 15, 20-year careers all that more impressive. Dwight Gooden, another good example of that. Great talent. Dwight Smith, who, coming out of his fantastic rookie season that he never quite matched again. Hmm. Kent Herbeck. I was just thinking if we should maybe put him in there. But I want somebody, like I said, with a good shorter career. Mike Scott, a really good pitcher for a handful of years. All right, we're down to the last three. I don't think I'm going to end the sweepstakes because I don't think that they exist anymore. Wouldn't that be funny, though? 
Now, who do you think that is? Let's take a look here. I know it says it right on here somewhere. Mark Davis. Hmm. Oh, there's George Brett, Hall of Famer, great player there. We'll put him aside. Yeah, Cecil Espy. Oh, look at that! I honestly, so I have a personal collection all around. I don't know that I have this one. Really excited to get that one. Put that in my personal collection pile there. George Bell and Jay Bell. Look at that. Honestly, that makes my day right there to have a, a new addition to my collection of Nolan Ryan cards. Just one of the greatest pictures of all time. All these cards are a little bit bent here, too. You can see the bend in there. Oh, they're 30 some years old in their packs. Huey Brooks, Kiki Jones. Actually, I looked up Kiki Jones not that long ago because he was a number one draft pick. He's one of those guys who um, just never really saw success there. So he's really working and trying to get back in the big leagues even now, all these years later. Check him out if you can. Duplicate there. Darren Dalton, Billy's great, Ellis Burks, Red Stocks great. <clears throat> you know, as I get older here, I recognize more and more just how small the print is on all these cards. Some of these things are just, I think about that like 1988 score, they were super small print on the back with a lot of copy. There's Joe Carter with the flip up sunglasses, something you don't see much in these days. Gary Carter, a great catcher there. Steve Avery, one of those great Atlanta pitchers. Randy Myers, Andy Best. A lot of good pitchers in these packs here. Dave Henderson, Slugger. This is Saberhagen? Yes, Saberhagen. Steve Bouchelle. Bobby Bonilla. And Doug Drabuck, another great pitcher. So let's uh, finish up our session here with Kevin Mass. So this is his rookie card. No major league experience at this point. I'm gonna move this stack over here. We'll look up Kevin Mass on the old Wikipedia and see what happened here. Life after baseball is mostly what I'm interested in here. Top prospect for the Yankees is he was unable to replicate the success of his rookie year and played for two major league ball clubs over five years. Let's see here. Yep, so only five years in the, in the pros between the Yankees and the Twins. Batted 230, 66 home runs, 169 RBIs. Um, and looks like he played for in Japan for the Tigers for one year as well. 22nd round of the 1986 draft out of the University of California. Came up for the Yankees in 1990 and they hoped he would be the heir to Don Mattingly. Um, shuffling back and forth between majors and minor leagues released by the Yankees in 94 San Diego, Cincinnati, Minnesota and briefly made to the majors in 95 with Minnesota but was a one hit wonder then signed with the Tigers of Japan's Central League in 1996 to replace Glenn Davis as of 2008 he works at Charles Schwab as a financial consultant in his hometown of Castro Valley, California divorced with a daughter named Lacey and a son named Christian, regularly invited to Old Timers Day at Yankee Stadium and participated in the 2008, 11, and 2017 games. There you go. So this is a guy who, after baseball, um, went and got a, a, a quote-unquote normal job like like uh, the rest of us, working for Charles Schwab as a financial consultant. So good for him. And, um, you know, again, just proof that although these guys, we tend to, to idolize them and put them on pedestals, um, not all that different from you and I. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, it's very grounding to remember that these are just people too, and hopefully it gives us helps us give them a little more grace um, in their dealings in their personal lives. But in any case, hope you enjoyed this session. I'll be back with some more vintage cards from the junk era. Um, have a good one, guys.